which I think is not many. My name is Mark Hamilton, also known as Hami in some circles. And obviously, I will be your MC tonight. As part of that process, let me begin with a quick overview of the proceedings as follows. Betty Sunbrett will speak on behalf of the family. There will be a few personal tributes from people here today. The reading of a few tributes sent in by email by me. Very short closing remarks. And last of all, but very important, the social is celebration of Billy's life. So without further ado, I shall press on. This is the second time that I've been asked to officiate by the Barber clan and honored to do so on both occasions. The first time being the wedding of Brett and Michelle at the Barber's Museum many months ago. And obviously the second is today. Well, distinctly different circumstances, they have one important thing in common, the celebration of life. As one of my close friends says, we here for a good time, not a long time. And Betty certainly adopted the first part to the fullest with a level of enthusiasm and enjoyment that was there for all to see. I shall say no more on that as I suspect there will be, these, this will be highlighted by the tributes that we will hear tonight. Now to be absolutely clear, we are gathered here to celebrate Betty's life and all that it was in a style that she would have wanted some old talk, shared memories, and a few liquid refreshments of the stronger variety for good measure. <laughs> there is no doubt in my mind that she is looking down with Chris smiling at the outpouring of friendship, love, stories, and laughs being exchanged. And in that spirit, I will share you with my own Betty story. Betty and I go back reasonably far. Always got on well, and we loved our mode sport, as many of you will know. Part of that enjoyment involves some travel to more sport events in the region, and in 2003, which I think it was, there was a sizable competitive spectator contingent going from Barbados down to Jamaica for their big event, Rally Jamaica. Needless to say, Everybody, everybody was looking to economize by sharing a room. And while I must admit the details of how Biz and I ended up together is a bit fuzzy, <laughs> we became roommates for that trip. We had a great time, watched some great motorsport, had some great chats, laughed a lot, and needless to say, drank more than we should have. No surprise there, given that we both are partial to a few beverages of the stronger variety. It was a great trip with great memories. It also resulted in one very interesting fact. Betty has the distinction of being the only other woman, other than my wife, to sleep in the same hotel room with me in the last 40 years. <laughs> a fact that Miss and I would amuse ourselves about from time to time. I look back at those times fondly. Right, we move on to section two, so to speak. As I said, there are a couple of, four to be exact, uh, persons that we asked to come and say some words. Uh, Mr. Brett Barber is coming to speak on behalf of the family. Brett. shy away from crowds. But today I make an exception as it warms my heart to see you all here. Good afternoon everyone. Yes, I said good afternoon. That's what she wanted. A good celebration of a happy life rich in friends. I am sure she is with dad and friends looking down at us smiling with a beer in hand and no shoes. Mum, Biddy, Bridget, Nana, Rally Granny. Whatever name you knew her by, you had to love her. She was a happy-go-lucky person who loved life and meeting people. I think her favorite thing to do was to turn strangers into friends and friends into family. I will give an example. Many, many years ago, my parents met some strangers here on vacation from Canada. 
among being the ringleader of social activities, ensured that we spent lots of time together when they were here. And in so doing, these Canadians became very close to us, like family. To the point that we introduced their daughter to a Barbadian friend of ours, they eventually married. But it doesn't stop there. They, in turn, had two kids, and I am the godfather of their daughter, who is now a grown woman and mother. But it doesn't stop there. We also introduced the aunt of said goddaughter to another Barbadian friend of ours who was traveling to Canada, and can you guess? Yes, they also got married. So that's what it is like being family to Biddy. As most of you know, I was very close to mom. I grew up sharing the same love of most sports, socializing, <clears throat> and the occasional girl. The love of motorsports even resides within my sister, who, as you all know, Ali. Um, she actually met her husband, Paul Rees, a Welshman living in England while he was rallying in Barbados. And, as you know, they also got married. <laughs> Mom's love of motorsports is in our bloodline, as evident in the fact that her grandkids, Austin and Tyler, have been attending rallies since before they could walk. Austin is actually competing in the Mud Dogs event this Sunday, and Tyler is marching with an eager eye to give Austin a wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing she liked more than partaking in these hobbies while never taking things too serious. She was a yin, the dad's yang, and now they're about to get it. This year has been very difficult for mom, and it's on behalf of my sister and I, we would like to thank those that played such a vital part in keeping mom's spirits up. Annie Katie, Annie Rosie, Angela Worm, Johnny Pinto, Bridget Garrity, and her loving neighbours. Also thanks to the team that helped get today ready and all of you for joining us. To wrap up my chattering, I have many, many great memories and stories of mum, and I look forward to hearing them as we celebrate tonight. Cheers. <laughs> Okay, I'd like to call Mr. Barry Gale, friend, and speaking for the Gale family, who have a long and close relationship with Biddy and Chris. Glasses. Uh, <laughs> me too, I got wearing glasses too, yes. Um, Brett said, so I'm just going to stop and say a few words, so I've been hacking away because I thought it was just literally going to be a few words. And since Biddy would have liked it that way, I'm going to respect that. It will just be a few words. Um, she was Rally Granny, but she was also my godmother. And so uh, we spent a lot of time around Biddy and Chris and Brett and Ali. Um, going back to the days of following the June Rally, when the June Rally had special stages in it that were a surprise to all those who were taking part. Yeah, right. You would come around the corner and find the start of the stage. Anyhow, we followed it one year with Katie and Biddy, Carrie, Brett, and myself, and Ali and Rachel. I don't even know if Rachel was able to follow a gym rally in those days. It was that long ago. But um, I remember driving around the car roads and, and watching a gym rally, and that's, I think, where one of my the love of motorsports sort of began for me is... is uh, following it around and the camaraderie of everybody that was involved and the, the fun of watching these cars go through cane grounds and run off into canes and you know it was it was where I think my love was born and Biddy was a part of that. She was definitely in her most sport. She used to call me Barry Beansy from the days of following the <laughs> following the June rally in the in the Suzuki van up until the last time I saw her she would call me Barry Beansy. And she called Freddie Fritzy Bum Bum. I don't know where she got that. I don't know where she got that name from, but it stuck like it stuck like. <laughs> um, you know, she's the type of person who would see me in the gas station on a curve and Barry Beansy! And you know, everybody around is now gonna ask, well, where did that name come from? 
she was synonymous with motorsport for me for all of the time that I was competing and, and driving and mud dogs and rally and everything else. And she's always always there asking how things are going and she's the type of person who would have got out of her van watching you get stuck up in the mud to come and help you get out of the mud. You know, she wasn't afraid to, to come and get dirty and, and whatnot. She got a name Rally Granny and it was a name that she wore with pride and like shoes. <laughs> When the news broke that Bits had gone through her last checkpoint, um, I mean, a lot of WhatsApp chats and a lot of people were saying, you know, oh my gosh, I didn't know, and, and everybody went immediately to the not wearing of shoes, but also to her unapologetic approach to life, to being who she was, to being brought to meet the Governor General or the President as she was I think at the time and being told a full list of protocols and manners and politeness and she <laughs> took that list and threw it out the window and went along her merry way and I think she would have been appreciated immensely for it. Um, I look around today and I see a great measure of Bidi the person and the number of people that have come to have a drink with Biddy, for Biddy. Um, I watched people walk in, go and look at the pictures. There weren't any sad faces, there were smiles. All of those pictures are full of smiles. Full of smiles. And everybody looking at them was full of smiles. Everybody here today, apart from maybe during these speeches, is having some memories and some hard feelings and whatnot. But for the most part of today, Today represents Biddy because Biddy was one of the happiest people I know. Always smiling and laughing and having a good time. I think that she would have really appreciated or she will look down and appreciate what she's seen here today. And uh, I know I'm going to have a few runs for her for sure. Um, and I ran out of things to say. So, Biz. <laughs> You touched me, you touched all the people around you, and uh, we thank you for your presence here. Yeah. Our next speaker is Mr. Leslie Aline, friend and fellow Madoga. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, shite biz, you got me nervous already. <laughs> First thing, let me get rid of these titles. All right. I, feel I can't believe she even let me write something. Can't even get on full good. All right, somewhere around 1985, my parents introduced me to the Barber family when they lived on Highway 7 in Belches, just below Oystens. My mom and Betty were very, very good friends at the time, and I quickly learned how crazy the Barbo life and Barbo family lifestyle was. <laughs> My mom had a rear wheel drive Alfa Romeo with an 1800 engine and twin side draft, the Lord of Cabaretas. And I assumed from then, Betty had convinced my mom that they need to go rallying in this car. Of course, Betty was to drive. In 1986, I believe it was, and I stand corrected from the date, but I believe they made their debut in the June Rally in 1986. And I remember vividly watching them sliding around Portville at a dexterity test at the end of the rally. And Biddy laughing as usual, and I can hear her up to now saying, Oh, Ras! <laughs> as she wrapping the steering wheel out of the three foot in diameter to my mind. <laughs> And the, the ass of the tank, as they called it, was trying to hang up and overtake the front. And she was just still laughing, having a ball. Um, in those days, my dad also rallied, and I used to give him all of my attention. And my mom and Billy didn't like that very much. And I remember distinctly that right after that rally, I got the first views in of my life from Billy. And you can imagine the way in which he delivered his 
abusing and the, the type of language that she would use. But needless to say, I pulled up my socks because they certainly don't want a second abusing from me. <laughs> a few years later, my mom died, and at this, this point is when Biddy really became my adopted mom. In 1992, when Barbara's lived in Baroness in Atlantic Shores, there were many nights and weekends of partying, laughter, a lot of shite talk. We all had grand cars at the time. But he had a, a little Subaru 600, I believe it was. Seven. 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 Okay, thanks for the correction. That was officially known as the Yellow Submarine. She tried to submerge a few times in her most sport excursions. But it's say one night, um, we were driving around making a nuisance of ourselves on the South Coast, me and Biddy in this uh, submarine. And the submarine didn't really pull handbrakes too well, and it was a very bouncy car from my memory. And somewhere out by uh, Silver Sands, I was trying to pull a handbrake through a corner and it had a big dip in it. And needless to say, the handbrake didn't work so well. And when this car bumped so that he dipped like a pogo stick, <laughs> all I could hear it once again is Biddy O Rats. <laughs> I'm not going on to these bobbies before they're not me. <laughs> With that said, now she's adjusting his strap of the over the shoulder bone, the whole that she used to call it. Still laughing, and we had a whale of a time. There were just many, many occasions like this, we can't really go into all of them. Um, let me pick up my uh, place here and yeah. oh, all of that. Right, well, the last thing about the other submarine was the song by the Beatles. That then became a staple in the Marvel household. <laughs> so much so that a certain DJ that will remain nameless yeah. managed to play it back to back several times at Ali's wedding, in fact. Yeah. Uh, and she was obviously very fond of um, all the oldie goldies, um, Neil Diamond, Kenny Rogers, John Denver, they all filled our hearts and ears with joy many weekends over the years. Another thing that he loved was a good roast beef on Yorkshire pudding. So Adam Lee, Jojo and myself would have gone there several times over the years for a good day of drinks, laughter and, um, and good food. And this Yorkshire pudding now was one thing that Biddy had in particular was very fussy over. It had a precise recipe that you had to follow to a tea. And needless to say, one day somebody opened the oven. And all of a sudden, we had Yorkshire pancakes. I think about what page two. Uh, great. Yeah, so let's get back to rallying. I better read this one because it might get a little more tricky for me. <laughs> Biddy had more sport running through her veins. She was a loyal and faithful member of the Barbados Australia Club. In more recent times, to my dogs. She has been tireless in her efforts to promote women in motorsport. In the early 90s, I assisted Biz when setting the first of her treasured ladies fund rallies. Over the years, she proudly organized several of these, and each and every one was a huge success. Biddy really loved navigational rallying, and she made it her lifelong mission to promote newcomers to the sport and generally ensure that the sport does not die. One thing she always wished was for me to carry Austin in a rally, and I'm happy to be able to fulfill this wish this coming weekend. Biz, this one is for you. My last conversation with Biddy was a quite emotional one when she said to me, Les, what are we going to do? We cannot let this sport die. Oh, they're sidetracking me. Well, my friends, the truth is, it's up to us now to ensure that her lifelong vision and tireless dedication is not forgotten. This, you have been an inspiration to many, whether it be given to those in need, who, when you have done without, providing a support and help in a time of need, or putting us straight with one of your famous and colorful musings. We have been close for 35 years, 
and you shall always remain a special part of my heart. Our right, fourth and last speaker, Hesman. Hesman, you're a good Heather and Desmond Jarrett, Desmond will speak. Heather was a long time schoolmate and a long time friend of Billy. Started getting involved with Heather, <laughs> and every now and then Heather said, "No, no, 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 no. You, you go back home, and Billy and I got a little party to do." <laughs> <laughs> and this happened on a number of occasions. Eventually, I think I won. Anyhow, um, that is how that started out with that. It's my long way of it. Winwood Cricket Club, all years night, big do, their body jogging and tight, curls and long dresses, they work, and it rained poor. Kara Spark on the cricket field. Party is finished. Biddy and Chris get in track 2000, because he worked at the Sandbox Castle then, that was his company, Kara. Carol will move, I'll be his turn. So Chris said, Biddy, he says, all right. she said, all right, I'll get her. She gets out and goes, he says, I'll push. So she goes behind, push. So Carol eventually ripped and moved off. But Biddy decided, you push behind the left back wheel. And she would allow her from head to foot a man in a long dress. The only time I've ever seen Betty in a long dress. <laughs> Needless to say, the language was out of this world. <laughs> you all would know. Right? So that's more occasion. Um, another time. I was I work in, come home one evening, usual time, five o'clock, to find Heather and Biddy sitting down in the kitchen drinking. I said, what is this? And they had had a few of it, not all. <laughs> so I was then told, well, Brett and Ian have 11 plus tomorrow, so we prepare ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Two things that I remember. Okay, thank you. Okay, you'll have to put it to me for a couple of minutes now. There were several tributes sent from overseas generally, some are local, but um, there are five in total. And the first three are from the Bastards. Is that the Canadian family? Okay. Yes. Their their father worked for Air Canada, lived next door. Right. Uh, okay. Head school in moment. Yeah. So obviously very close. So the first one is from Elaine Lanning Baxter. Never in a million years would I have thought I would have to say goodbye to Biddy. I have known her almost my entire life, since about five or six years old. Her dad's office was in the same building as my dad's in Bridgetown. We got to be even better friends when we were adults. Only in years, but definitely not in actions. Betty, I love you like a sister and always will. Till we meet again. With love, Elaine, Nanny. Carol Baxter. Who I presume was a daughter? Sister. Three sister. sisters. Three sisters, okay. It is with a very heavy heart that we say goodbye to a major legend and an amazing friend. There wasn't anything that he wouldn't do for you. Our trips to Barbells will now have a gaping hole in them and will never be the same. 
we are going to miss the many laughs and giggles spent on the gallery of number 32 Ocean City. And who can forget the white ladies served from the cooler in the back of the, of the Jeep as we went off roading over to rain somewhere in the boonies of Barbados. Rick Biz, you are and always will be missed with tons of love, Carol. Susan Baxter. I got to know Betty, Betty when I was a young adult. To her, I was just another of the Baxter girls and was always welcome. Just another one to tease and take off rolling. Whenever we went back to Barbados, Betty would take the time to pack a cooler and pick us up for an adventure. She always tested our fortitude with her crazy driving. We would stop at rum shops where she knew everyone there and we would need some drinks. Betty was barefoot almost always. There was no pretense, she was grounded. What you saw is what you got. Ali, Paul, Brett, Michelle, Austin, Tyler, and her broad range of friends from all over the globe. Betty is gone from this earth, but is forever in our hearts, Susan. From Susan Anfield. Biz was the antith antithesis. <laughs> Too many beers. Of a snow. That means the opposite of. I had a look at that. <laughs> Unlimited by the social pressure and so-called norms which often bind us and restrain us from being our best selves. Betty was her best self, loving, sporting, resourceful, hardworking, and seriously fun. As constant as the Northern Star to her family and to all who were blessed to know her. Truly a strong woman of substance. Her sweet greeting of Susan Margaret used only by her and her family to me, will ring precious in my ears always. God bless and keep her safely and please spare her a cold bites if possible. <laughs> to those who grieve, take comfort in the knowledge that to grieve deeply is the badge of honor of having loved and been loved so very well. Farewell, dear Spids. I hope to see you on the other side. You will have a special place in my heart forever, Susan Margaret. From Mary Hall. I was fortunate to meet Biddy on her first visit, on our first visit to Barbados in 1979 with my late husband as part of a party of English cricketers and friends here to play matches against the local teams. Biddy and her English husband Chris were the owners of White Sands Beach Apartments, which was to be our home for the following two weeks. On the first day of my stay, I decided to take full advantage of the beach and heard a voice saying, Why someone tell Mrs. Hall it is not a good idea to lay down the beach in the hot sun? It was Betty's voice and of course she was absolutely right. Ignoring that advice, I suffered the most painful consequences of my stupidity. No guesses who took care of me for the next two days and restored me to be able to enjoy the rest of my holiday. From that day on and for the next 52 visits, taken over 40 years, but he has never failed to be there for Mike and I and our family. I wish I could mention every aspect of Biddy's kindness, advice, and yes, lots of laughter and fun. So, so many happy, happy memories. I have never truly met anyone before or since to equal the unique Biddy Barber. Rest in peace, our lovely friend, Mary. Last one. From Shelly Williams. Andy Betty, you were so much more than just my best friend's mom. You were a second mother to me, growing up in our home in, in your home in Atlantic Shores, Shores alongside Ali and Betty and Brett. Sorry. I witnessed for a time the incredible spirit you carried within you. If there is ever a person who saw no color, no class, and harbored no prejudice, it was you. You taught us to be fearless, showing us there was nothing a man could do that a woman couldn't do better. <laughs> as I look back now as a little girl, I marvel at how you managed it all. Being a devoted wife, a loving mother, to your own children and their friends, an entrepreneur, and excelled in a sport you were passionate about, rally driving. And you did this all whilst making it look effortless and most importantly fun. 
I realize now that my love for tourism and entrepreneurship has a doubly in, was a doubly influenced by the countless hours I spent with you and Uncle Chris. The values you imparted, the life lessons you taught, helped shape me into the person I am today. One of my proudest moments was when I had the distinct honor of presenting you with the Lifetime Achievement Award for Motorsport. You will finish this race in life with the same excitement and vigor that defined your journey. Thank you, Andy Betty, for molding me and for inspiring me. Rest in peace knowing that your legacy lives on in all of us who were lucky enough to be touched by your extraordinary spirit. So in closing, a lot has been said this afternoon clearly showing who Betty was and what she meant to people. This is what we were here to celebrate, so in closing I will simply finish with this. I propose a toast to Betty. While your light of life has been extinguished, the light that you shone on everyone will forever be with your family and friends. To Betty. To Betty. That's it, folks. Please enjoy, continue to have drinks for beds. If your checks in, she can likely pitch you on, on, on your, attach you on your back and give you a good cursing. <laughs> <laughs>